Welcome to the presentation of our paper dealing with the influence of layered parasitics on EMI-improved folate cascode amplifier input stages using filtering and linearization methods. Within the scope of this work, we compare three EMI-improved differential input pair structures using concepts of filtering and linearization in terms of their susceptibility to electromagnetic interference. We pay special attention to the differences in the behavior of the structures at the design stage and the layered stage to find out if layered specific parasitics can affect circuit performance. There are scarcely any technical applications in the modern world that do not rely on the advantages of microelectronics. It is therefore no surprise that well over 100 control units with countless integrated circuits are installed in modern motor vehicles. Due to the increasing integration density of current semiconductor manufacturing technologies, it is now possible to combine millions of digital logic gates together with mixed signal devices as well as power electronics components into a single IC. If such ICs are to be used for safety features in automotive applications such as airbags or anti-lock braking systems, these must ensure a high level of EMC in order to work properly within the electromagnetic environment. For safe operation, it is very important that the used ICs are capable of recording sensor signals reliably and accurately even in the presence of EMI. Operational amplifiers are very often used as sensor interfaces as part of electronic sensor systems. The power supply and the inputs of such operational amplifiers are often directly connected to the cable harness and therefore especially exposed to very harsh electromagnetic environments. As a result, operational amplifiers can be severely disturbed and often a so-called EMI-induced offset voltage occurs at the outputs. For our investigations, we are starting with a simple folded cascode amplifier. We designed this amplifier to have a differential mode gain of about 80 dB and a gain bandwidth product of about 10 MHz. All circuits are implemented in a 0.35 micrometer CMOS annual technology. The input stage of this simple folded cascode amplifier does not feature any improvements in terms of EMI. Therefore, we replace this simple input structure by other more EMI robust input structures. We use the order of measures to mitigate EMI, which is suggested by literature. These measures are filtering, linearization and compensation. However, in this work, we only focus on filtering and linearization concepts. Filtering the inputs is a simple and effective way to handle EMI on the input differential pair. In the context of this work, an integrated RC filter structure is used. We design the filter to have a cutoff frequency of 50 MHz and the area requirement can be adjusted by using a larger resistor and a smaller capacitor. The differential input pair remains the same as in the reference structure. Therefore, the layout of this structure is reused and extended with the needed resistors and capacitors. For the linearization concept, we use two methods to make the differential input pair more linear. Source degeneration and using a cross-coupled differential pair. By both methods, the transconductance of the transistors is flattened around their operating point, but also lowered. A simple way of linearizing the input stage is to add a resistor to each of the source terminals of the input transistors. As a trade-off, between a high and a preferably linear transconductance, a resistor size of 1 kilo ohm is used. For the layout of such a linearized input structure, using source degeneration, we use matched resistors and add them to the reference structure. Using a cross-coupled differential pair structure poses more extensive design and layout issues compared to source degeneration. On the one hand, the W over L ratio of the two transistor pairs, as well as the ratio of the two currents used within the pairs, needs to be adjusted to cancel out the third order harmonic. On the other hand, for the layout mainly three things have to be met. 
The ratio of the two transistor pairs has to be designed back corrected in such a way that unit transistors can be used to achieve best matching among all four transistors. The total number of unit transistors has to be chosen in a way that a preferably rectangular arrangement can be reached. The unit transistors themselves have to be positioned by some common centroid approach. In real integrated circuit designs, additional parasitics, for example introduced by the layout of the ICs, can have a negative impact on the described concepts to improve the immunity of operational amplifiers. Such layout influences are the main scope of this work. With the layout, additionally introduced parasitics, such as capacitance to substrate, intermetal capacitances, path and gate resistors and many more are introduced to the circuit. Since the EMI disturbances are applied to the input stages, it is especially interesting to which other nodes the disturbances propagate. For instance, there is the possibility that intermetal capacitances couple EMI directly to the outputs and that coupling to the substrate is also occurring. For the layout of the standard differential input pair, we use the common centered approach, which ensures a small technological offset voltage at the output of the operational amplifier. To keep the structures of the input pairs as similar as possible, the layouts of all structures feature the same unit transistors and the same transistor arrangement as in the layout of our reference structure. The output stage and the necessary BIOS blocks are also designed once and reused for all structures. This ensures that primarily only the influences of the different input structures can be investigated. Let us now continue with the performed simulations and the results that we obtained. First, we check whether our amplifier structures meet the specifications of a gain bandwidth product of about 10 MHz and a differential mode gain of about 80 dB. Additionally, we simulate other important amplifier parameters that can be seen here, both for schematic and layered back extracted versions. You can see that all structures approximately meet the necessary specifications. The parameters are color coded green meaning good results and red meaning results that might require further attention. The filtering structure B shows lower stability compared to the other structures. The linearization structures C and D suffer from a decreased gain bandwidth product and worse common mode gain and a lower differential mode gain. The other parameters such as technological offset, power consumption, output swing, and slew rate rise and fall ratio are comparable among all structures. In terms of area, structures B and D require about 60% more area compared to structure A. Matching is most challenging for structure D as two differential pairs have to be matched among each other. For simulating the EMI induced offset voltage, we configure the amplifier as voltage follower with a DC input voltage of half of the supply voltage. On top of that input voltage, we superpose a sinusoidal disturbance. Finally, we obtain the change in DC output voltage by averaging the output voltage. This offset voltage is referred to as EMI-induced offset voltage. For our first EMI investigations, we use an EMI amplitude of about 500 millivolt and sweep the frequency from 1 MHz to 10 GHz. This results in this plot. You can see that the schematic and layered back extracted versions behave similarly. The difference in EMI induced offset voltage between schematic and layered back extracted level is quite low. There is only a small shift in frequency when the highest EMI induced offset is reached. Furthermore, we can see that there were only minor differences between real and ideal biasing. Altogether, the filtering structure shows the best results for this analysis. The changing sign of the EMI-induced offset voltages can be explained due to the phase shift at the amplifier input stages drain terminus of 180 degrees. This change in sign is happening for frequencies higher than the second pole which lies at about 5.5 MHz. For better comparability, 
we calculated the EMI rejection ratio for an amplitude of 100 mV and at common frequencies that are used by communication applications. Again, structure B performs best, whereas structure A performs worst. The results regarding EMI RR show that no clear trend due to the transition from schematic to layout back extracted level can be observed. To give an example, the EMI RR for an amplitude of 100 mV at the frequency of 2.4 GHz is much better at the schematic level compared to the layout back extracted level at structure C, but structure D shows exactly the opposite behavior. With that we have shown that parasitics introduced by layout back extraction can influence the performance of operational amplifiers. An important finding, however, is that the parasitics of the layout do not significantly affect performance when EMI is applied to the input of an amplifier. The amplitude of the EMI induced offset voltage remains almost the same, however, the peaks are slightly shifted towards lower EMI frequencies. By this means, future EMI robust IC designs should be eased by knowing that layouting poses no significant influence on the EMI behavior. With these conclusions, we have not yet reached the end of the line. We plan that in addition to structures A to D, we want to investigate structures using compensation methods in the same manner. The overall objective is to manufacture all of these investigated structures embedded into an operational amplifier test chip to conduct the same measurements on chip level. Finally, the overall comparison of the EMI performance on schematic level, layout level and the manufactured IC will be published. I'm Dominic. And I'm Nikki. We hope you have enjoyed our presentation today. But anyway, thanks for watching.